BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. Hello, it's Gary Lineker here. You know the drill with these by now. Don't expect your usual match of the day analysis. And we might have to get the bleep machine out from time to time when the boys get overexcited. Thanks for listening. Welcome to Match of the Day Top 10. Uh, as usual, with Ian Wright and Alan Shearer from their homes. Um, it's the last one of this particular series. Um, and to be perfectly honest, it's not exactly turned out how we thought it would, has it, chaps? What do you, what do you mean? Well, it started off as a podcast, Ian, yeah. remember? And now it's not oh, only yeah. a podcast, but it's also a television show. It was so, so long And ago. we're doing it from our front rooms. Yeah. And when we started, we did it in my kitchen together. Right, so, yeah. strange circumstances. Um, I'm quite pleased with um, the response, which you, you, it, it's, it's, so divi- it's so divisive. It's brilliant. I just love the comments that you get back from it, but um, it's been really quite enjoyable to do. It seems a long time ago eating that ragu in your kitchen with having a, uh, and having a glass of, uh, of wine, doesn't it? Yeah. I know. Yeah. Those are the days. Well, hopefully they'll return. But this week, because we should really now be looking forward to the European Championships. And um, so we thought about major football tournaments in, in terms of our subject this week, which we'll come to in a minute. But it, it's about uh, international football, uh, certainly involving the home nations. Um, what did it mean to you two to represent your country, first and foremost? Ian? Well, it was everything, simply. You know, I didn't... When I, when I got into the game, I just wanted to be a professional footballer. To then, you know, after, what, what five years ending up getting into that, that England squad that just came back from the World Cup, a very successful World Cup, getting to the semi-finals and, you know, with yourself and Gaza and everybody that was there, Brian Robson and all that stuff. It was, it was kind of, it's, it's strange simply because going into that dressing room, I felt like it was an out-of-body experience simply because you, you kind of feel like you shouldn't be there. And I remember Graham Taylor actually said, you know, you, you've, you've earned your right to be here, but it's very difficult to look at the faces and everybody that was in there, all legends and everything that was in there, and not feel like, whoa, what the ras is going on here. So it was yeah. like, for me, it meant everything because it wasn't what I was expecting. I just wanted to play football for a living. Describe your emotions when you first wore that white shirt, or unless it was an away match, of course, then it might have been a different colour, but put that shirt on to walk out to start for England. It was really strange because, you know, when you... When you play for England, it's different to the warm-up in respects of like it's the same with the, with the FA Cup. You you have to do, you can't do stuff in your own time. It's all regiment. You have to go at a certain time. You have to do certain things at a certain time. And I just wanted to make sure that while I was in there, I wasn't too excited about getting a shirt and putting all my kit on and everything. And I remember when I went in and saw the kit, my Crystal Palace boots and shin pads and stuff underneath the number nine, um, and it was eight um, eight Gascoigne, nine me, and then it was it was ten Gary Lineker. I'm saying it like you're not here, sorry. And 10 you. And then what happened, what happened was, is that Gaza could see. That's what I'm saying. Gaza saw, I was kind of, it kind of got the better of me. Um, and I kind of was welling up. And then he literally said, all oh, right, he's going to cry. And it kind of broke me out of it because yeah. I literally, um, <laughs> in, in that moment, it just yeah. all just came in on me. It was, it was unbelievable. Was that, the, was that the Cameroon game? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it when we Cameroon played it game. and I pinched that goal from when you. you. Yeah, that's the one. When, and I remember <laughs> I even didn't when... I did pinch it from you. I just did, got him first. No, you just... It was literally, I can't believe how close I genuinely thought, oh my God, this is it. And then you just came, bam, out of nowhere. And you went, that was mine. <laughs> <laughs> what you said. I did. That was mine. I'll <laughs> tell you the other thing I remember. Can you remember how cold it was? Oh my gosh, it was freezing. Oh, this it's is the why coldest I think, I think I've ever, it's like minus because, 10 or something. Because remember coming off of the Cameroonians and how brilliant they were in the, yeah. in the, in the World Cup. Them coming there probably thinking, oh, this is going to be great. They were freezing. I remember one of the guys yeah. had a massive thing on his face where he was just so, he was just so cold. He was sitting <laughs> massive on his face. <laughs> yeah. uh, Alan, um, take us back to your debut and what it meant to you. Uh, well, to play for your country, I was still playing at uh, Southampton at the time and then getting mm. the, the call up to say that uh, Eng- you're in the England squad and, and totally agree with what Wrighty says. Um, the excitement uh, and then going into the dressing room with guys who you've been watching over the years who have been playing in, in World Cups. and it does, it does take you a few games to think, wow, do I really belong mm. here? Yeah. Uh, and for you to feel comfortable... 
in that dressing room. Uh, I made my debut. You were on the bench, Gary. You came yeah, on at half time. We both got a goal against uh, France at, uh, at, at Wembley. Mm. And it, it, was, it was a dream come true. I didn't ever think it was going to happen. I wanted it to happen. Mm. Uh, but then when it actually happens, you think, wow, goodness me, how lucky am I? So to, uh, to pull that England mm. shirt on and then to captain. I mean, I always wanted to play for England, but I never, ever felt that I would captain my country. And that, for me, is, is the greatest honour uh, I could have in, in, in my career. The biggest and best thing that has ever happened to me in, in my career is to walk out with that armband on it uh, at Wembley in front of 80 or 90,000 people representing your country walk, and walking out first. It doesn't get any bigger or better than that. I, you know, I remember, Captain, I remember Graham Taylor calling me. I was at home and I got a call and I thought, because quite a few players, the obvious replacements um, for captaincy after 1990 when Bobby Robson left... Um, Terry Butcher retired, Peter Shilton retired, Brian Robson was kind of getting towards the very end of his career. So I thought I had a little chance of getting it, even though I was a striker. Um, and then I, I, and he called me at home and he said, I just wanted to um, um, make you aware of the fact that um, you're going to be the New England captain. Wow. I, never, I, never just, I just made me all tingly on that. I had like goosebumps all over me that day. Very proud. Can I just say, moments. I remember, like, even Brian Robson, I found it very difficult. I remember I had to play a an England B game in Algeria with him, and I played yeah. it, and it was very difficult to not stare at him. It was, <laughs> it was, it was weird, just being yeah. in the same dressing room as Brian Robson. I couldn't believe that. What a great player! God, Absolutely I couldn't believe great that. Player yeah, as well. And he was, you know, and I think honestly, think we'd have had a chance of winning one of those two World Cups that I played in if, if Brian Robson hadn't got oh, injured. Oh, he's injured. Both of them. Yeah. Uh, which was a real shame. Anyway, it leads us on to our subject this week. Um, we've gone for the top 10 home nations moments. Um, so obviously that gives us a degree of flexibility. We've gone post-66 because, well, we've heard a lot about that and obviously that's the greatest moment, but kind of quirky moments, great moments, memorable moments. So we've gone post-66 um, because, well, most of us weren't born, but even, well, I was <laughs> Anyway, so, right, um, Alan, we've... Um, I'll, I'll let me give the 10 first and then put them in your particular order. And these are in no particular order as I read them. Scotland and Ali's Army in 1978, uh, Archie Gemmell and all that. Uh, Northern Ireland beating the host Spain uh, in the World Cup in 1982. Uh, we've got Hand of God in there uh, in 1986, of course. Uh, four years later, uh, Gaza's Tears, uh, 1990, the semi-final against Germany. Um, Gaza again in 96, uh, the dentist chair, uh, that celebration. Uh, David Beckham's red card uh, in 1998 and everything that happened around that game. Uh, Wayne Rooney's uh, red uh, when Ronaldo uh, winked at him, of course. That was uh, in 2006. Uh, Wales' win over Belgium uh, to make the semis in the Euro 2016 and their subsequent video uh, reaction, etc. Uh, England going out to Iceland uh, in the same tournament and um, England uh, finally winning a World Cup shootout because they won one obviously in Euro uh, 96, winning a penalty shootout in Russia uh, two years ago. Um, God, it's only two years ago. <laughs> Seems longer. I don't know why. Alan, you start 10 to 6, please. 10 to 6, Gary, and 10, I've gone uh, Gaza uh, when you were mm -hmm. uh, saying have a word. In 9, I've gone oh. the Ronaldo wink. Yep. In 8, I've gone England eventually win a World Cup penalty shootout. In seven, mm -hmm. I've gone the dentist chair in Gaza. Yep. And in six, I've gone Scotland beating Holland. OK, let's have your ten to six. I think it's uh, as well, Ian, that we can um, 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 debate them as we go on. Yeah, I've gone um, ten, Archie Gemmel, um, yeah, Ali's yeah. Army. Nine, yeah. I've gone Robson Carnu. Eight, um, the Beckham, um, Beckham sending off. Seven, Ronaldo's wink. Um, and six, um, England winning the penalty shootout. Right, OK. Um, uh, let's start with um, one that you've both got in the top, in your six to ten, um, and that's um, Scotland in 78. Yeah. And Archie Gemmell's um, unbelievably good goal, that I have to say that. Goal. And it was the whole build-up that was quite interesting with, with Scotland, wasn't it? Because... Ali yeah, McLeod was trying yeah. to convince everyone they were going to win uh, <laughs> yeah, the know. World Cup. They had the song, didn't they? Ali's Army and all that stuff. Yeah, but the thing with it is, is Gary, is that when you look at the team, they had the, the greats from Liverpool, Hanson mm. and Souness and yeah. Dalglish. Then they had, I think they won the FA Cup with Ipswich, with John Walk and, and, and George Burley and people like that. FA, they mm. won the league. 
Scottish players were involved in the Nottingham Forest team that won the league and McGovern and, and, and John Robertson and all that. Like, so George Jordan. Yeah, all that stuff. So that was a Jordan, really like, good Scotland team. Amazing squad. Amazing Scotland squad. Mm. So I'm not. I don't know how much Ali McLeod. It was tongue and cheek. You know, saying things like I read somewhere the other day when I was looking back on it mm. that he said that he's cleared a place on his mantelpiece for the winners' medal. They're going to have Ali McLeod Day um, on the World Cup <laughs> on World Cup Day. But I think that looking back at his team and and, and the squad that he had, he probably would have felt pretty pretty confident even though we're talking about the World Cup. But saying that, I thought, what, they lost, they lost to, what, Peru, or maybe? I think it was 3-1 and drew with Iran. Mm. And they needed yeah, to score needed, the three goals. Yeah. yeah, They needed to score three they goals. They needed against, to win by three. Exactly, but yeah. Against, obviously, the team that had been in the final yeah. in the previous yeah. um, uh, World Cup as well. Um, yeah. But like, and you've got it a little bit higher. Yeah, I just think, I mean, uh, they, they went 1-0 down in the game uh, as well and totally agree with what Wrighty says in terms of some of the Scotland players in that team. There were some fantastic yeah. players in there. But then to go in uh, against, that, uh, against that Holland team who were regarded as being very, very strong team, they knew that they had to win by uh, three goals to... Uh, to to qualify, um, going one nil down, Kenny Daglish getting them level at uh, at half time, and then Archie Gemmell scoring that penalty, and then that brilliant goal when he went past what two or three players on that right hand side, yeah. and sort of and I, I forget who he sort of yeah. nutmeg, didn't he, and then sort of dinked Beautiful. the uh, the goalkeeper, yeah. and then all of a sudden they're thinking, wow, we've got a, one more goal here, and we can we can get through. So um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I just think for uh, for a performance wise. I know they didn't. They eventually didn't qualify, and they missed out on uh, on goal difference. But they give it a hell of a goal. Yeah, and of course England didn't qualify for that World Cup '78, no. or, or no. as they didn't in '74 either. So I think all of us uh, were cheering Scotland on, weren't we? You better whisper that, hadn't you? No, no. But the thing about <laughs> it is, is that what I remember. I remember it. I remember watching the game, and it was a massive uphill task for them. I didn't think they would do it because of how good Holland were. I remember watching it thinking, oh, they're never going to do that. And it was really close. Yeah. Very, very close. How old was you in 78, Al? I was seven. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> because for some reason, I can only picture you with your head now on a seven-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> That's I had weird. a bit more hair then, righty. <laughs> yeah. You'd have made the England squad if they qualified, he probably would have, yeah. He's probably made his debut yeah. by then, yeah. <laughs> 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 what, that, 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 I cut, that picture can't leave my head. Now. <laughs> it's a powerful <laughs> image. <laughs> it's a powerful it's a really, image. It's slightly disturbing image. <laughs> um, um, right, let's. Uh, well, we'll save Italia 19, um, Gazza, and all that because obviously, Ian, you've got that in your top five. Alan hasn't. Um, but what you've both got the Ronaldo wink in. Um, Ian, you've got him at seven. Yeah. Alan at nine. Mm. Um, Alan, um, that was, I don't know, that side, that side, you, we thought, didn't we, that had a real chance of, of doing well. And that, that was kind of the moment, wasn't it? Rooney seeing red that our hopes dropped. That was it. He went in for the tackle, I think it was on Cavallo, wasn't it? Um, his little, he had a little stamp and a, a sort of a, yeah. a kick mm -hmm. out and then Ronaldo comes in running into the... Uh, to the referee to complain. You can see sort of Rooney looking around thinking, what the hell is yeah. is going on here? Um, and then he gets the uh, he gets that uh, that red card and as he's walking off, then Ronaldo has the little wink, doesn't he, to the, uh, I think it must be to the coaching staff or to, who, to whoever it, it is, yeah. as if to say, that's it, we've done it. We've, we've, we've nearly won this now. Yeah. I know. And, th and that was such a good English side, yeah. wasn't it, players-wise, that they, you know, that golden generation, we thought yeah. they were onto great things, didn't we? 2006. Well, no surprise. We go into uh, we go into a World Cup thinking we can win it, and the hype is is, is there yeah. again. But you're right with the with that with that team. Uh, but, yeah, and you see I mean, with the often we've thought yeah. that because you build up your hopes, don't you? And as we know, it's the it's the hope that generally kills you. Mm. But you you thought back then, if you go through that no. team and that squad, I mean, poor. No, you, you, but you yeah. never just never quite got them into the right. Shape did they? they had three no. great midfield players, didn't we? I think we mentioned it before. Yeah. But, um, just couldn't, couldn't find, just couldn't find the balance, could they? Uh, not, and no, I mean, no, in no. terms in, with the individual players, were fantastic in terms of finding mm. the balance to make it work. Could just never find that. Like I say, just having just having Skulls, Lampard, 
and, and Gerard alone yeah. without like Owen up front, yeah. Ferdinand. And you just think to yourself, what manager cannot mould that team into a tournament yeah. winning team? Mm. Well, he was, he was insistent on playing 4 4 2, wasn't he? Oh, God, it's just, it annoys me even just to yeah. think about it. But you know what's interesting about yeah. that as well is when I was reading some stuff, when I was looking at this about well, like Wayne Rooney saying that if he had his time again, he probably would have pulled himself out of that tournament because mm. of the injury. Yeah, because of the injury, wasn't he? You know, you mentioned, we mentioned him earlier on, like Brian Robson, which seems like we always go into yeah. a <laughs> tournament with our top man, whoever it is, struggling to get there. Yeah. We've seen it recently with Harry Kane mm. yeah. and everything like that. But that, when you go back to that particular game um, and you look at, um, you read some of the stuff, what happened? Because obviously Manchester United, again, it was yeah. a, a Man United player we saw with Beckham in 98. Um, we saw even with Roy Keane, what, 2002, mm. whatever it was, 2002. Man United players, again, being like vilified for something that's happened in the World Cup. When Wayne Rooney got sent off, in that, in that World Cup, it was just like, again, digging him out. But I, I couldn't blame Ronaldo yeah. as, as much as I was... I was just going to say, right, what do, you, what do you think? I mean, it, it, what, once, once you're out on the pitch, doggy dog when you're playing against, is, you're playing against someone? It is, Al, and what you learn and what we should have learned from years, what's happened to us, is other, other countries, and I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, but other countries will do whatever it takes to win that tournament. Yeah. Because when you look mm. at that tournament now, they're probably going to talk about Maradona. People are not bothered about it. Argentina, they're not interested in what we think. They've got the World Cup. Mm. You look at um, Cristiano Ronaldo with that particular game. He knew that in that particular teammate, he would be able to do... He would be able to do <laughs> enough between him and Carvalho. Can't tell me that Ronaldo didn't say a word of Carvalho and said, keep digging, keep winding him up. Yeah. And got him sent off. I remember the wink out. Yeah. I was absolutely beside myself, obviously because they were teammates and you read afterwards about them getting together and shaking hands and before the season started and that. But Wayne Rooney himself has said, I, if it was me, if the revolt roles were reversed, I'd probably have done the same thing. I don't think he'd have winked though, would he? Well, he wouldn't have <laughs> winked, but you know what's annoying, what, what I, as much as people say, oh God, how can you say that? It's so bad. It's like when we've done one of these when we was doing the bonkers and yeah. people saying about we're glorifying people hitting and doing this and me doing the stuff what I did and Brucey and all that sort of stuff. But when you're in the heat of that particular moment, you do what it takes and you deal with the consequences mm. afterwards. And I'm not mm. even going to lie to you. If we got to like to a World Cup final and one of our players done something like what Maradona done, I'd probably be able to sleep at night. I would sleep at night. Mm. Alan, what, what, was your, what was your take on the Ronaldo wink? Just... If it were one of our players, we wouldn't be bothered, would we? It's not, it's not the worst sin in history. Nah, is it, it wasn't. It wasn't that. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. He, he, he knew that uh, England's main man was about to depart the pitch, and I think that's yeah. what it was was about. He sort of fell into the, fell into the trap, if you like, um, and he was he was delighted and happy more than more than anything, mm. as if to say it's worked. I never had a huge problem with it. Let's um, move now to a rare moment of joy um, for an English team at a World Cup. And um, the Columbia game, two years ago, penalty shootout. Uh, we were all watching. Um, <laughs> we were all fearing the worst yet again. And um, actually won one. It's amazing, isn't it, that what a bit of preparation can do. Yeah, but you, you know, you, you, you say that, Gary. You, you're right with... Because uh, whether yeah. it was with psychologists, whether it was practice, whether it was... Whatever, whatever it was, yes, homework, without doubt, can, can help you. But when you get to that moment, you know that players who are on penalties are no longer on the pitch, whether that's because of form or, or tactics or injury, whatever that may be, those are, are off, the, off the pitch. And you're only left with, uh, with the players, which we'll get on to. I'm sure we'll talk about that when we get to the, uh, the David Beckham incident in the, in the red card against Argentina. Um, but you, you can't always put the players you want on the penalties. No. No, you're absolutely right about that. But the thing is, that's why it's so imperative that all the players practice their penalties. Mm. I mean, I know you were penalty taker for England for a while. I was paid penalty taker for England for a while. I know that you practiced very similar to me. You took loads of penalties. Um, I think, I'm not even sure if you did the same thing as me. You just practiced the penalty that you were going to hit in the game. Yeah. 
Is that right? Yeah, I, Which I is knew. exactly what I did. I knew the. Uh, I and, knew and the we deer, didn't yeah. do that though. Yeah. The rest of the team didn't. No one else practiced yeah. a penalty mm. when I played. No one else has practiced since. And then you, I used to, even sensible people like Glenn Hoddle saying, "Yeah, but it's different when under the circumstances in the pressure." Well, that's like saying, "Well, it's different if you're putting to win an open from six feet." Yeah. Um, but that's why they practice their putting for hour on end to kind of repeat, repeat, repeat. And I never understood it. And then Gareth Southgate finally yep. did proper preparation with all the players, lots of practice and penalties. Pick your spot, don't change your mind, all that stuff. And lo and behold, we actually won one. You know what's really good about it as well is when you listen to the guys, <clears throat> when they talk about practicing once the session's finished, when they're tired, saying it's not luck. Penalty shootouts is not luck. You can't tell me that the Germans no. No, have just it's been a technical lucky. technical skill. Absolutely. Absolutely, the Germans yeah. and the, the fact that they've never lost one doesn't say to me that's luck. Um, I think that once you are in, in the tournament, you should be practising them right from the off. Um, you can never, ever um, get somebody ready for that walk. Once no. you can find a way... Mm. You know what I mean now? You know yeah. as well, Gal. Once, if you can find a way to replicate the walk yeah. with the people in there... Well, you can't. You, that can't. you can't. You can't do. No. But this but is you why. Can still you can, though, replicate a walk, mm. even though the pressure's not the same, and practice and practice. And even if it only makes 1% difference, 1% possibility yeah. of, of scoring your penalty above, it wouldn't do if you hadn't practiced okay. it, then it, it's a must. I've never they understood are, they are that in, would uh, argue against practice. Yeah, you've, it doesn't make you, any sense. You've never, if you've never been in that situation, yeah. though, Gary, and I, I get exactly what you're saying and agree with everything you're saying in terms of the practice. But if you've never been in that situation, yeah. your legs have never felt like jelly. You, you can't even you can't <laughs> even feel your legs. It, it, I know. It I totally, uh, absolutely right. <laughs> and then absolutely you, right. That, that, that to have that belief and to have that mm. confidence to say, I'm going to do exactly what I did yesterday or two days before, mm. uh, ago when I was uh, mm. when I was practicing because, oh, I mean the, the, the pressure that's on you because you're aware mm. of the millions of people are watching back home. Ow. There's seventy, eighty thousand in the stadium. But yeah. the, the biggest thing is, is that it's the guys behind you. It's your teammates and, and yeah. your manager or your coach that you're feeling the biggest pressure for. You know, I was going to say, yeah. because oh, of no, you two... pressure's enormous. Yeah, but Gal, with you and yeah. Al, me being at home watching you two, you know when you're at home and you know when you watch a penalty shootout and someone's walking oh. up? Because what I wanted to ask you two is that because you've both taken them in this situation for England, did you, when you were going up there, how frightened were you? Because when you two were going up, I said... At home, they're scoring. Good man. <laughs> I always Thank said, you that. Your I said that. Thank you for your belief. You go first, Alan. I wish I had your belief, right? When I was walking up, doing that walk from the halfway line to the penalty spot, I might have felt a bit easier. I thought you'd score. I knew it. I knew it. I, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. I know it's a bit strange and I, I don't know why, but I actually really enjoyed it. Um, Did you? I just thought, yeah, honestly, I, I, you know, yeah, I was a little bit nervous, but... but I, I mean, I had two in the previous game against Cameroon in normal time. Oh, and, gosh, and yeah. that was, in fact, this, in, the, in fact, the first penalty against Cameroon was probably even worse than the penalty shootout. Because in the penalty shootout, I went first. And if I missed it, well, there was still half a chance. Mm. But with eight minutes to go and 2-1 down against Cameroon. And I'd been penalty oh, taker God. for England for five years. And that was the first penalty we'd had um, under Bobby Robson. And, and I'd practised my penalties endlessly. And I, and I hit it. And I was there. And when it... The, I remember, because I was brought down, I went down, I looked, saw the referee, boom! He's, yep. he's quite a demonstrative referee. Pointing to the spot, and I thought, yeah, penalty! And then I thought... Oh, my God, I'm taking it. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but then I was actually, I thought, OK, just do what you did in training. And, and there was part of me... Did you blast that enjoy, one? And I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what, no, and no, I placed the first one in the um, keeper's left. Because in training the night before, we were training in the stadium at, at Naples, and Bobby Robson came up to me just before I was about to practice my penalties, and I always did. He went, Gary, I said, what? He said, um, you might need to rethink your practice strategy. So I said, why? He said, I've just been told there's a Cameroon yeah. spy in the stadium. Oh. So I went, all right. So instead of hitting 30 to the keeper's left that I've been practicing all week, I hit about 10, just 10, low to the keeper's right. Right. Hmm. So come the moment, I thought to myself, right, take the penalty. Just hit it as the ones that you've practiced for weeks. And I, and I hit it. And as I hit it, I hit it sweet as a nut. And as I looked up, I could see already that the keeper was diving low to his right. Oh, okay. Now, I'll never yeah. know, I'll never know, but possibly. At the eight minutes later, the final whistle goes, Bobby Robson runs on the pitch, comes up to me. He goes, I told you, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bless his heart. Um, so, yeah, but yeah. Um, 
well, we've kind of got away from the absolute subject of yeah. um, England. It, but it was, it was magical, wasn't it? Yeah, but the thing with yeah. the, the pen, the last penalty that Eric Dyer took, if you look at it, I, I, this was a, a moment where, when you consider the amount that we've lost in, obviously 90, 96, you know what I mean? We could yeah. go on, 98, we could go on and on. I it's literally, when I was, I, was in, yeah. I, I was in there, yeah. and I literally, my, my body went into a kind of a, a, a shock moment where I don't know how I would have reacted if yeah. we lost that penalty shootout because I just, I couldn't yeah. deal with another one. I literally thought in that, I don't know yeah. what I'm going to say if we lose this one. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to cry. I don't know what's going to go on with me because I was just sick and tired of losing them. And especially when you heard them out mm. the times that we've, we've been practicing them. And then when you looked at the Eric Dyer penalty and it was against Ospina, with all due respect to my Arsenal goalkeeper, that wasn't a great penalty. You know, he went the went right in, way. Doesn't it, 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 yeah, it doesn't it went in. <laughs> But I'm thinking to myself, when yeah. he went that side, Ospina, if you look, it went under him. And it was, mm. for me, he's somebody that saves a lot of penalties yeah. for, for, for his country. Yeah. And I was so worried that if he went the right way, he would have saved it. In the end, obviously, it went in. And like you say, yeah. any penalty that goes in... Yeah. Pickford's, Pickford's was a brilliant save, wasn't it? Because he was sort of diving to oh, his yeah. right, wasn't he? Yeah, and he got just, that big, strong... Yeah. Hand to it, didn't he? he? Got his wrist to it and high, yeah, high up. He's, yeah. I know, extraordinary. Jesus, fantastic stuff. Alan, you said you were really nervous walking up to take the kick, and your legs were turned to jelly. Because I always thought, as a striker, it's all, uh, I know we, every, it's, it's different to on the pitch and stuff. But I always thought a penalty. It's like it's what strikers want. Yeah. It's, the, it's a fantastic chance to score. I only ever felt nervous in the in the shootouts. I never felt nervous taking a penalty during a game and, and, and in fact ah, I des different. desperately desperately wanted penalties mm. during a game but in, in the shootout uh, I was it, it's yeah. it's one of the most nerve-wracking situations on a on a on a football pitch it, ever it, um, and, and it is very different and you, uh, the, on your mind if you get to in and around 85 minutes and you're thinking right we're going to have to go into extra and, 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 and extra time and then on the about round about that 85th minute you're thinking Someone's got to pull us out of my ear because I really don't want to take a penalty in the shootout. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, though, but in a penalty shootout, that I mean, it's it, it's an incredibly pressurised situation, and when you score, it doesn't count. No. I know on your all-time list of yeah, goals. It's not fair, that, is it? That's should, out, it should it's count. Outrageous. Yeah. It should count. It's not fair. It's outrageous. It should go on your tally. No. It should go on your tally. I think it should go on the tally. Let's get it on the tally. <laughs> I'm level with Bobby Charlton at last. You, you, sh you should have been a you should have been anyway if you hadn't done yeah. that stupid oh, dink against don't, Brazil, don't. wasn't it? I yeah. know, I know. Ridiculous. Oh, a, I've been practising that the day before, but it was on a, like a bare surface and the Wembley, I kind of caught it a bit fat. God, that was embarrassing. I was just trying to be a smart ass. Should, should know better. Uh, describe um, writing. Obviously, your your pictures with um, with Lee Dixon and stuff went viral, didn't they? Of your celebration when oh. the winning penalty went in because you were broadcasting that night. For the other side, <laughs> I hasten to add. I know, but it wasn't, for some reason, it wasn't the moment of the, the World Cup, but that's fine. I ain't got no problem with that. Um, the fact is... <laughs> it's part of it, though. It's the part, part of, of it. Can I be totally honest? It, like I said, I tried yes. to explain that um, I had a, a, a proper moment of, I don't know what I'm going to do if we don't win this. I don't know how I'm going to compose myself yeah. if, we, if, we, if, we, if we lose this one. I've been, I, I think I've been broadcasting... For every, literally every single England penalty shootout. Um, and I literally, I couldn't take another one. I just couldn't take another one. So when we did, when we did win that one, the, the reaction was, it was, it was pure. Yeah. And adulterated pure joy. Yeah. It was, I, I can't remember the last time I felt that kind you, of You reacted, joy. you're exactly, exactly the same as, yeah. as we did. We, were, yeah. we had tiny, those, you know, those little porter yeah. cabins because yes. our offices yes. were next door to each other, yeah. ITV and BBC. And we're all together, we're all mates anyway. And we were in, we were in the, um, our little bit with this little TV because um, we were doing the highlights later that night. And we were, we were exa obviously no one's filming it, but it was just, it was, just amazing. Like, it was like years and years amazing. of... <laughs> Finally done. It was. We we're all jumping down. I, I had tears it's in my eyes. I don't mind admitting yeah. it. I, you, yeah. can't, you can't help yeah, it. I, no, you can't help it's it. emotion. That's and that's that's that sport, isn't it? Sport at its finest when you really, really care. Yes. and it goes your way. I think. It, I think because of it was our fourth attempt, wasn't it, at a penalty shootout in World Cups? We'd lost in ninety ninety eight and two thousand and six. There was yeah. one thing. There was one thing you could guarantee 
that England would be ready for uh, in that World Cup 2018 would have been penalties because of what happened to Gareth yeah. in 1996 at, uh, at Wembley point. against Germany. Right, let's uh, move on to our top fives, um, starting with you, Ian. OK, five to one, I've gone five, yeah. Ireland beating Spain. Um, yeah. Four, I've gone with a dentist chair. Three, England losing to Iceland. Two, Gaza. And one hand of God. OK, Alan, you're five to one. Uh, five is Northern Ireland beating Spain. Uh, four is the robson Carnu goal. Three is England losing to Iceland. Uh, two mm -hmm. is the David Beckham red card. And one hand of God. OK, well, you're both in fifth. So let's start with there. You've got Ireland against Spain. Um, that was the 1982 uh, World Cup, of course. And... Um, well, an, uh, just an unbelievable victory, wasn't it? Jerry Armstrong, the goal. Jerry yeah. Armstrong, yes. Uh, and Jerry incredible. Armstrong, God. But mm. like the, the thing with the, with, the, with the actual game, with the way Spain played, and I was reading that the, 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 actual, the actual referee was a Spanish-speaking referee. I think that he was... The Spanish players were getting away with murder. I know that the manager, the Spanish manager was um, saying things like, um, we, we, we beat them all over the place, They're nowhere near the game. We, we hammered them everywhere. But they were getting these silly fouls. They were smashing into the Irish players. The referee wasn't doing anything. Mal Donaghy got sent off. It's one of those games for me. In the end, Ireland were destined to win. They were destined to win it. Wasn't that, wasn't mm. that the first tournament where it went to uh, 24 20, teams from 24, 60, yeah. 16? And, and there was a concern. And they had two group stages, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. There was a concern yeah. that yeah. it would, this, this so called smaller uh, nations would, uh, would, would struggle. So for, for, uh, for Northern Ireland to beat them in the, uh, in, in the way they did. And, and Northern Ireland actually won that group, didn't they? Yeah. They topped, they topped the group. I think they did, yeah. which, I mean, it was an extraordinary effort. I mean, it's. A long time since that, you know, very rare qualification as well, wasn't it, for a, for a World Cup? And then, yeah. I, I look, looking back at the, uh, at the goal with Jerry Armstrong, he sort of picks the ball up in his own half and pushes it out to, to the right-hand side. And I think it's Hamilton that crosses the ball and yeah, keep a mistake and he's there to, uh, to smash the ball smash in. So, in. yeah, what a moment mm -hmm. for, uh, for Northern Ireland. Yeah, I was Island. quite happy for them. I was happy for them that, um, that day. It's one of those games that when you're at home, and watching it, I I was desperate for the Ireland for the Irish to beat them, mm. um, just because that's what you do. Um, yeah. You know, you, you want them it's to. It's funny, isn't it? We do cheer. We do cheer on the um, yeah. other home nations yeah. generally, don't we? Whereas they certainly don't cheer us. On they don't know <laughs> most of. I don't know. I don't I quite understand why, but <laughs> but that's another <laughs> matter. <laughs> um, right, um, Robson Carnu, um, Alan, you've got him in fourth. Mm. Uh, Ian, you had him right down in, at ninth. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, again, um, just a, a fabulous victory, wasn't it, to, to, to beat Belgium. Quarter-finals uh, of a major championship, um, the Euros. And Wales performed brilliantly in that tournament, didn't they? Really, right throughout. They were 1-0 down, um, got back. Uh, and then, and then to, I mean, the atmosphere was unbelievable uh, for, uh, for Wales. And then for, uh, for Robson Carnu to... To score that goal mm. in the way he did, where he sent cracking goal. He, he sent three of the Belgian players for pie and chips or whatever, didn't he? When he just sort of went to go <laughs> and turn back round the Cruyff turn, and then the uh, the finish was just unbelievable. Mm. It's a good finish. Certainly was. What about the, um, the then the video was there was released, wasn't it? Yeah. At um, one point, um, yeah, after and, a game that yeah, they, that's, and, and, against kind of anti English thing. Well, you 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 say that, and we would say that, but. You probably expect any of the, the home nations, um, the, the other home nations, to, to do that with England going out, especially to Ireland. Now, I know that, I think it was the guy Taylor, Neil Taylor, I can't remember the, his name, one of the, the players. I think he came out and said, no, it wasn't anything to do with the fact that England went out to, 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 uh, to Iceland. It was the fact that they were supporting the underdogs, which, yeah, to a certain extent, but no, England's going out to Iceland. <laughs> They're laughing at our expense. And at the end of the day, the way we performed in that game, we should be laughed at. We were a disgrace. <laughs> I thought that we were, it was an embarrassment to the country. Um, and, you know, for, you know, you can't expect yeah. Wales to celebrate yeah. in any other way. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not something no. that I, that like made me think, oh, Wales celebrate. I expect them to do that. I'd expect well, didn't Scotland England, to do that. Didn't England beat Wales in the group stage earlier on as well, didn't they? So, yeah. 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 Daniel Sturridge, um, yeah, Daniel Sturridge scored the winner, but you'd expect them to do that. And I have got no problem with 
the, the rivalry between none no. at all. And they done no. brilliantly no. in that perform in that tournament, no. without a doubt. Um, did it bother you at all that video thing, Alan? No, no, it no, seemed, no, no it just, it's, it's, why would nothing yeah, in it at all. I don't blame them at all. Yeah, they were. Good luck. So what? Good luck uh, to you. Yeah, absolutely. No problem yeah. at all with that. No, uh, they were terrific in that tournament, Alan. Yeah, they had a they had a great togetherness, didn't they? And and they got on, uh, and their fans were having a, a, a great time, uh, having the party of their life, and and so they uh, so they should. They provided a great atmosphere, and it was great entertainment. Yeah, so it was it was brilliant for them. Can mm. I say on that particular, um, even that game, um, it was it was a kind of Joe Hart. Anytime I think of that game, I think of Joe Hart and what happened to Joe Hart from then. Which game? Wales yeah. against England. Oh, the first one yeah. in the group stage. Yeah. yeah, and you know, and 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 the way it kind of like kind of tailed off for him from then to now. And when you speak to him, you see how unfortunate it is and yeah. how different it is for a goalkeeper to anyone else on 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 the football pitch. Because up to yeah. that point, whatever people thought of him and some of the saves he made in qualifiers and everything were magnificent. But how quickly it changed for mm. someone like Joe Hart. You know, Pep came in, done what he'd done. And you know, it just for me, that was one for me, it makes me feel sad to think about that situation just because somebody you know didn't play his best game. It really, that that really just still rankles with me that he's been treated like he has been up to this point. Great um Gareth Bale performances in that, that competition. God, he's wasn't amazing, they? God. Mm. Jesus, talisman yeah. or what? When the when the pressure oh. because the pressure obviously is on him, he was uh, he was the go-to guy, so he had to perform. And he certainly did. Absolutely. Yeah, he certainly did. Okay, um, dentist chair, um, in and yeah. you've got that, that, that there in uh, fourth place. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fantastic stuff, wasn't it? <laughs> Gather at, at, at his finest. You know what was, <laughs> And the goal itself, yeah, the first goal, and foremost. What a goal. goal. Oh. But remember, I remember there was um, the outrage with the dentist chair. Remember, that was, I was. Before I was, the tournament, yeah, yeah. I was that close to the, um, to the 96 squad, and still something that's very, very raw for me. Because I thought that coming off of the bench in FA Cup finals for England, mm. um, knowing that I, and, and it was a golden goal, it was a tournament that every mm. time I think of 96, it really does make me feel sad simply because he took yeah. Les Ferdinand and Robbie Fowler. I thought, yeah, brilliant. Awesome yeah. players, don't even get me wrong. But yeah. never used them once. And I knew that I could come no. off the bench and maybe do something. So did, did, always, he, did he tell you he was going to leave you out, Ian? Did you get a call or I got a call. I got a call from him after... I think it was Romania, where he played the Christmas tree, which is still something that I can't wait to take my Christmas tree down because I smash it to bits when I do. So we, <laughs> you know, we played a Christmas tree. I think I was up front, Matt Letizia was on the right, I was on the left, chasing Dan Petrescu down into the left back spot for the whole game. After that game, I got a call from him, maybe the, the Tuesday or Wednesday saying, listen, I'm going to be looking at some other players, but I know what you're capable of doing. So the, that season as well, I still scored my goals, scored my quarter of goals, so I was not thinking that I wasn't going to make it. Mm. So when he didn't pick me, I was distraught. So did he, ne he never told you you weren't going to no, be picked? You were never just heard from of, him. You never just heard didn't from make him. the list? Never heard from him no. since then. Never heard from him after did that. Did he hear from you, though, Ian, after he left yes, you Yes, because, I, because we were doing some stuff for, um, in, in, in Qatar, and I got him. He was sitting on the inside <laughs> of the plane. <laughs> and as I came on... Because where we were sitting, it was quite empty. I sat right next to him. I gave him six hours of it. Six right hours. <laughs> and to be fair to him, you know what I mean? We spoke about it. He went through it. It was magnificent, his account of that tournament. Righty. Go on. Just get over it. I hadn't scored for 13 games. You must have been <laughs> if he hadn't put you in the squad. <laughs> Yeah but, yeah, but the difference is, the difference is, Al, the difference is, Al, is that he knows what you are capable of doing because of what yeah. you've done. So I'm thinking, because of what I've done previously, that might give me the edge and get into that squad. And I don't want to digress, simply because I believe, and I will not, no one could tell me any differently, that if I was warming up at some stage to come off of that bench for England at Wembley, I'm feeling like I'm scoring a golden goal. I just feel like that's what I'm... Yeah. I was made to do. So it's something that's always very difficult for me. Yeah. You mentioned Terry Venables, and uh, from, from my point of view, it was, an un, yeah. it was a piece of brilliant, genius man management to get me to have the confidence that I needed because I said yeah. I hadn't scored for 13 games, nearly two years in an England yeah. shirt leading up to the, up to the tournament. Yeah. So before we actually went to Hong Kong and, uh, and China, Terry had uh, pulled me to one side, Terry Venables, and said, 
whatever happens in these games, uh, you will start. You will be my number one centre forward in that first game against Switzerland at Wembley in Euro 96. Mm. And I just thought, wow, for him to have that much belief in me, to have, the, to, to have that confidence in me. And I just thought, you know what, I can't, I have to go out and I have to perform for, uh, for, this, mm. uh, for this guy. And fortunately, I got off to a you good did. start in that first game yeah. and then the confidence yeah. was back. Yeah. He had faith. Tell me about what happened with the dentist chair. Were you there, Alan? In, was it in Hong Kong, wasn't it? Yeah, I was. Uh, I was. I was in there. Um, I, I, for for whatever reason, I go over to the uh, over to the bar and Gaza and Robbie Fowler and Steve McManaman and, and one or two others are, are, are there. And we've been there an hour or two in in the bar. And for whatever reason, they just ripped my shirt. They just pulled my shirt <laughs> from the button. buttons down, who and that was it. it? Well, I can't remember who it was. What it was one of the guys. It was probably Gaza. And Probably. it was that was it. And everyone stood there with ripped shirts in the middle of a bar. I'm thinking, <laughs> what the hell is going on here? And all the fans are around. And then I sort of stepped back. Um, and before all the uh, the shenanigans with in the dentist chair, I'd, I'd gone, I'd left because I had the ripped shirt, and I went for for a yeah. drink with um, with one of my uh, sponsors. And so when everyone was pouring the drink down the throat in the dentist chair, I wasn't, uh, tell, I wasn't tell, there. Tell people what the dentist chair was that, you know, because it's, what is it, nearly 25 years it was ago. This, so yeah, it was, it was a chair like where one ago. of the guys had to go and sit in the chair and so the chair yeah. was tipped back and your head was pulled back and then it was throw as many drinks down your throat as possible. And you can, and can, of course, can you imagine? Uh, I mean, the, they <laughs> were going into a tournament at Wembley <laughs> Yeah. And we're, we're sat in these, uh, we're sat in this, de de or the guys are sat in the dentist chair throwing all these tequilas and vodkas back, and there's photographs, and it was like, uh, and it was just it like was unbelievable. Mayhem, wasn't it? Yeah, but you know, the, you know, the thing is, guys, is that I remember the newspapers, and I remember Terry Venables coming out saying, I can't believe how you lot are reacting to this and you're giving so much yeah. stick. And I remember the, I the mirror in particular, I think they came out once Gaz had done what he'd done against. Scotland and played brilliantly. They came out with yeah. some kind of like little snivelling kind of like retract saying, oh, we didn't realise and Gaza's yeah. a genius and this and that. And you think to yourself, people do not understand how important it is for that kind of situation for people to bond and get Bit together. Of it, Bit they of fun. do not understand what that means. You find out so much yeah. about your mates when you are in that kind of situation. People say, oh, you're drinking. I said, you find out so much about people. And that, yeah. for me, with the way they reacted, brought that team together even more. Terry used that to his advantage because we were all aware that we'd, we'd let Terry and the country down um, with the pitches that were, were, were coming out. Um, and Terry sort of turned that around into everyone. We had to go out and we had to do something to repay him for, because of the faith mm. and for what he, he'd sort of stood up for all his, uh, all his players at the beginning of the tournament to say, yeah. don't judge him at that, judge him on the, on the pitch. So the players had to perform for him. Yeah, but on the pitch, of course, on the oh. pitch, Gaza against Scotland, mm -hmm. that brilliant goal and the celebration <laughs> was genius. It was brilliant. Yeah, it's the it best was, celebration. Gaza was, Gaza was saying in the, in the dressing room beforehand, if I score, this is what I'm going to do. So whoever it is, just run over to me yeah. and I'm going to lie there with, with my arms out and, my, my, and you're just going to come after to squirt mm. a drink all over my face. So whoever was closest... Was always going to uh, was always going to do that, but Brilliant. what a goal! What a goal he scored, eh? Oh, Unbelievable, wasn't it? Just magnificent. It, bobbed it over his head. Yeah, yeah. he was just yeah. fantastic. Was, um... yeah. <laughs> Super. Oh man, uh... <laughs> what a great yeah. tournament that was. We should have won that tournament. We're the best team in that tournament. Yeah. Breaks my heart. Yeah. A lot of similarities to that, that tournament in 90, obviously losing penalty shootout. Also, uh, in the same way, and the reason I mentioned 90 now, and we'll come to the different things in a moment of that. But just going into that World Cup, it wasn't quite the same in terms of a, of a scandal. But because Bobby Robson, who'd been you know, told his job was ending after the 1990 World Cup, he got another job. He was off to manage PSV, wasn't he? Okay. Um, and the press, it was like traitor all over the headlines and all this. And in a similar way, I mention it because it, it brought everyone together mm. in our squad. And we didn't speak to the press for a while. And there was yeah. a real togetherness um, for Bobby from the team. And sometimes you need a little do, bit of that. Do you think you? that? Do you think that in a, when you're going for a World Cup or something like that, um, whatever it is, a big tournament, there has to be a seminal moment of togetherness where something happens that make you all think in the same 
on the same, be on the same page? Because it seems like to, to be a, a, yeah, a common think, thing that happens, yeah. that something happens and like, right, mm. you lot, bam, we're together. Like, yeah. It seems like that happens. I think there's probably a degree of truth in that. I think it, it, it can help. It, I think it probably can affect you one of two ways. If, you, if there's something that causes a bit of friction in the squad, that can work negatively. But something like that, when it feels like people are having a pop at you, people having a go at you, then you get very protective to your own, don't you, I think? Yeah. And possibly yeah. that. We'd have to probably ask teams that have won things <laughs> to, to find yes, out whether, that, yeah. whether that's actually um, true or not. Um, Right, we go from, um, well, some great moments, some enjoyable moments, some mad moments to um, positively an all-time low uh, for England. You've both got uh, the Iceland game in third place and that's because I suppose that we were beaten um, by a country that uh, had, I think, uh, more volcanoes than they did professional <laughs> footballers. <laughs> what was it? It's a population of, what, I don't know, 350,000 or something yeah. like that, yeah. isn't it? Some, whatever, whatever it is. So, but, I mean, we, we knew exactly what they were like, what they were good at, set pieces, long throws, everything else. And uh, we were just, it, it just mm. wasn't a team at all. We were all over the place. The players didn't look as if they knew what they were, what they were doing, despite getting off to a, a decent start, wasn't it? When um, Rooney scoring uh, early yeah. on in the, in, in the game. But England just sort of collapsed. It was a dreadful, an all-time low performance. You know the thing yeah, with, yeah. with it is, is that I, I remember being in, in and around England for the time that I was in and around it, that I felt, you always felt there was pressure on you to perform um, the team. That's why I admired the 11 that always playing. I, did, I had no problems. Mm. But know, that's being the same in every big football country yeah. though, Ian. I, yeah, think but, I played in Spain and the expectancy levels yeah. are exactly the same. Yeah, but, um, they, might not, they might not have our kind of front of the um, tabloid mentality that, that, that we have in our country, that, which is a different point. But in terms of the expectancy of their yes. team, you, you bet your life that the Germans go mad after yeah, the, the last The Brazilians, the Brazilians, remember Spain, yeah. all the underachieving oh, years. Imagine, Argentina. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah. Like, when, when, so it's no different. It's, it's just no that different, we live yeah, it because we're What I'm here. saying is, is that that's the only time I've seen an England team buckle under the weight of expectation. Yeah, not cope with it. Not cope with it because... That we're mm. talking about players not being able to pass the ball five, ten yards to each other. And yeah. you see, mm. it, it, ball's going running under their feet. You're watching a, a capitulation mm. like I've never, ever seen from any England football team, even the ones that mm. didn't qualify 74, 78, you know, when we played well with Tomaszewski, you know, with, you know, all that sort of stuff. You know, we had mil millions of chances in that game. I never saw us capitulate yeah. like this. And yeah. Play it was awful. horrible. That, it was, that awful. It's horrible to yeah. watch. It's horrible to watch. Yeah. You're watching players that you admire and know can play better. Literally, yeah. almost like they're thinking of the outcome before it's actually happened. It was, yeah. it was a horrible lost, game they? to watch. Yeah. 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 Total humiliation, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 I, I know you've both got that in third, but I don't want to dwell on that one for too long. <laughs> no, really. let's leave that one, um, yeah. Let's, let's move on to... Um, right, you've got different second places, um, neither of which we've discussed um, before um, this, let's start with Beckham in night. Beckham red card, obviously Simeone, uh, ninety-eight. You were there, Al. Tell us what happened. Yes, um, I felt confident as we've already spoken about. I knew where I was. Uh, I knew where I was putting it. I was. Um, I'd practiced it, and it went uh, in exactly the the right spot. So that was uh, that was fine. We'd had a decent first half, and then Michael Owen comes in and in oh, in intro introduces himself. <laughs> at, on the international stage with an unbelievable goal, an 18-year-old scoring a goal like that. And then Argentina score a very well-worked free kick just before half-time to, uh, to get back oh, yeah. to 2-all. To, uh, to oh, yeah, but exactly, yeah. Um, but things, we were reasonably happy going back into the, into the second half. And then, of course, David gets that, uh, get that, gets that red card. I mean, Simeone played him uh, fantastically mm. well. Yeah. And he, he, I mean, it, it wasn't a red card, was it? It was just a little flick out, wasn't it? And he, he, he sort of looks yeah. back and flicks his, did you, his heel up. Did you see it at the time, Alan? Were you cl uh, close at hand? Yeah, I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't far away. And of course, with me being captain, I can see what the Argentina players yeah. are trying exactly what to, uh, to do. I mean, Batistuta was in there and, and Simeone Did you see Batistuta as and, well, Al? And you, yeah. Batistuta, yeah. Batistuta going like that, yep. Yeah. Yeah, that was the yeah, right thing yeah, to do. Exactly, like, yeah. Girl. When the red card shows it, when the ref shows him the red card, you can <laughs> yeah. see him nodding his he head. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, yeah, well done. Yeah, that is the yeah. right thing to do. 
Yeah. What went through your mind at that stage, Alan? Help. <laughs> um, yeah, that was that. That was it. Uh, we just had to. Yeah. I mean, we we worked ever so so, so hard and and keeping them out yeah. because we were under huge pressure. Uh, Michael up front on his own. I was on the right hand side, and then I went up front, and Michael on the right hand side of uh, of midfield. Um, mm. And oh boy, we we had to put a shift in, and then of course we thought we'd won it when. Sol Campbell, Campbell. Had, uh, had got that. What was that, what was that about? That? Uh, was that a push or something? Uh, what happened with that? What happened I with can't that? remember. It was never a foul, right? Never, never, never a foul. Never a foul. I just jumped up and me, my arm was 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 there with the uh, the goalkeeper, um, and we thought we'd won it. We were away. We were away celebrating. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jesus of course they they'd taken the quick free kick and nearly went up and scored them. Uh, themselves but then can um, you imagine if they had scored from that free kick yeah. when you're still sort of I know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable so we yeah. got back into the yeah. game but penalties again did you speak to david beckham at the end of the game did in the dressing room or how he what yeah not that i can not that i can remember i think did he was, say anything did he come up and say i'm sorry or was there i don't think there, was a, there wasn't there wasn't a lot said i think he knew no. he knew that i mean he's as disappointed as everyone we've all done Stupid things on a on a on a on a football pitch. So I don't, and, uh, with regards uh, holding it against, them, I don't think anyone can uh, can do that. It was. But what about the reaction back home? Oh, Remember no. the burning oh, effigies, and obviously he's turned Terrible. it round subsequently. You know, but God, but I mean, talk about an overre <laughs> overreaction. That's the thing with that, though, Al. Yeah. With um, with Al, our Bex came through that because let's mm. face it, if people were being sensible about what happened, whatever you say about Bex getting sent off in that instant. He didn't do he didn't do nowhere near enough to get sent off. You know, it was just no, in that was, particular was petty, wasn't absolutely it? ridiculous. The most that should have happened to him was the referee yeah, warned him and said something. Because for, for for the British public, for the public, the footballing community to react like they did was absolutely ridiculously mm. over the top. It was just so bad. I thought the referee was terrible in that uh, in, in that game. I remember yeah. we, we should have had a uh, we should have had a penalty when one of their players hand uh, handballed it. He disallowed our goal obviously Sol Campbell he sent Beckham off. I thought the referee was poor in that game. Mm. Not that I'm bitter or anything. It feels like it, Al. <laughs> and then we go <laughs> to penalties think, again. And then we go to penalties. I know. Penalties again. I remember. Oh, no. I, I said to. Uh, I said you to. You took the first one, didn't you? I took the yeah. Took the first one, and I, was, I had a decision to make then because um, you don't re really plan yeah. for having two penalties in the uh, in the game. I'd scored the first one; it had gone exactly where I wanted it uh, it to. Then I'm thinking to myself, right? What do you do now? Now what? Well, it's, a, it's a mind over matter. What's the goalkeeper thinking? What am I thinking? Uh, but I just thought, you know what? No, stick to uh, stick to what you've mm -hmm. practiced. Don't change your mind. Uh, you you put Bang. it where I, I knew if I put it where I wanted to do, he wasn't uh, he wasn't going to save it. Did he but go the right way? I can't recall. He went to yeah, he went the right way yeah, but it was it was up high Too where high. he was never going to he was high. never going to get it. Yeah, you ripped in the top corner, didn't you? It was Harry Kane <laughs> type of penalty, wasn't it? And we 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 were on about the fact where you're left with players who Glenn Hoddle's looking around now to say right, who's going to take a penalty, and that's the situation. That uh, that we were in, uh, myself, Michael Owen, and Paul Merson were all could all be judged as as the penalty takers. But then you're left looking around, and Glenn was saying, "Right, who wants to take a penalty?" Because the, the, the other than those three that I've mentioned, me, Michael, and Paul Merson, I think the, the other the rest of them were defenders or, or yeah. defensive midfielders. So yeah. uh, Paul in sort of said yes, and I think he, he said yes because of the, maybe the little bit of criticism he got for not taking one in, in 96, and David Batty because he just felt it was the right thing to do. And I always remember saying to David Batty, what are you going to do? He said, I'm not sure yet. I said, smash it straight down smash the middle. <laughs> I'm not sure smash yet. It. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> smash sure it. It's, good <laughs> it's probably a good a time to make your mind up, mate. He'd never, <laughs> taken, a, he'd never <laughs> taken a penalty, had he? He hadn't really practised them. He'd never taken penalties. Yeah. So I just said, smash it straight down the middle, head down. And as I left him, I thought that's what David Batty was, was going to do. I thought he was going to just he put it down it. and hit it as hard as he could. But he didn't. He sort of bent it to the keeper's right-hand side, didn't he? I yeah. thought he must have changed his mind at the last minute. Now, if any, pl if any player could deal with it's, it's missing a penalty in the World Cup with England and, and shrug it off. Who is that man? 
<laughs> with David, David, David Blatty. Yeah. He did an interview. He did an interview after the game, didn't he? Saying, "Well, we worked hard. I wanted to. Do, uh, I, yeah. I, I volunteered to take a penalty, but hey, yeah, there you go. Things like that happen. So yeah, yeah. It was. <laughs> it was definitely laid back. Yeah. You know what the I real outrage is? Go on. I don't think he even got a pizza ad, did he? <laughs> he didn't get a pizza ad. Didn't get in yeah, there. He wouldn't. <laughs> with Wadler, Stuart Pearson, Gareth. That brings us on nicely in a way because um, the, in second year and you've got um, Gaza crying. Uh, you had it further down, um, Alan. You had it bottom, but not that who cares about the order in this particular week. Mm. But they will. Um, and don't forget, you can always put your top 10 put in your, your own 10, list on yeah. the BBC Sport yeah. website. Yeah, so there we go. Anyway, um, yeah, Gaza crying 90, that penalty shootout was, it was the same. It was very similar to Chris Waddle, who, you know, he was. Because um, we had four players still on the pitch that were due to take them. In fact, all five of the penalty takers, I think, were on the pitch because uh, Gaza was the other one. Mm. And Gaza wasn't quite in the right state of mind of course, to yeah. take it. He didn't want to take yeah. it. And he spoke to Bobby. And then, and then Bobby was looking around. And in the end, he just, he just said, Chris, you'll be all right. You take it. And Chris Waddle's Chris technique's that amazing. His life, yeah. I think. Chris Waddle's got and he amazing changed his mind. He was exactly the most technical football you can imagine. I, I've heard him talk about this. I spoke to him about himself. He said, I was, you know, I was just going to place it and I was just going to run up and do it. And he said, and at the last second, I kind of changed my mind, that thing that you can never do, and just blasted it and, well... Might have just landed. Same with there, Stuart Pearce. We're, um, we're talking about the pressure. Yeah, you're right, right. You're talking yeah. about the pressure of taking penalties. So for yeah. for Stuart Pearce to miss that one in 90 like he did, but then to have the balls yeah. to, uh, to yeah. offer to take one in 96 against, oh, against I, I Spain. I thought that was Can one of remember? my favourite That's a proper moment. moment. Oh, yeah, that's a moment. Oh, it was unbelievable. Yeah. You, it, talk about want someone to score so much. Yeah. yeah. And his little reaction at the end of it was like, yeah. whoa, yeah, the release that's amazing. such an unbelievable yeah. moment. That's a brilliant moment. Um, yeah. Um, what wasn't a brilliant moment, of, of course, and um, it's funny, it's the question I get asked um, in life more than perhaps anything else other than what flavour of crisp do you like, um, <laughs> is what were you saying, who were you saying to, that iconic moment where I kind of <laughs> you know, looked at the bench. I mean, obviously Gaza was booked, late tackle, fella rolled all over the place. We all knew immediately what that meant, yeah. so went over to him, and I was just happened to be the closest person to him, and just was like, "You all right?" And he's, yeah. and, and I could and see the start, tears yeah. starting to well in his yeah. eyes, and his bottom lip was going. And I thought, "Jesus," you know. So I looked at the bench, and it was just to say, Look, "Have a word with him." Yeah. Basically, yeah. keep an eye on him yeah. because he might have gone here. Yeah. And in a selfish way, you still want the team to get through. Obviously, I yeah. felt for him. Yeah. But it, uh, but no idea it was caught on the cameras and stuff. <laughs> and no idea until I came home and people started asking me about it what it even was. Um, but <laughs> but Gaza in that World Cup was. I mean, he he played well, sensationally. Well, the really. thing with me, Al. That's why I know Al's got it a lot lower. But the reason why I've got it so so high is because of his emergence in the World Cup, and I feel. That had he stayed on, you know, it's another one. You know, I believe that he's going on to be the player of that tournament without a shadow of a doubt easily. Mm. I think that it's another tournament that with what the team, what we had, the experience, yeah. the youth of Platy and, 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 and Gazza in there and everything. Um, with yourself, Gary, up front scoring, um, half chances, whatever it was. Again, yeah. I'm feeling that we could, have, we could have won that. It would have been so different for, but for a challenge that, you know that in, in, in Europe and on the international stage, you can probably get booked for without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. We're watching it now in the Premier League and we're seeing people get booked for stuff that we think, come on, that's a warning at max. But like, he was so good for me. And when he cried, I, I was welling up. Everybody, the whole country yeah. was welling up. And I remember reading oh, yeah. something from Dietmar yeah. Hammond, Hammond saying about, at that moment, he, he thought that, Gaza, if he was in Germany, he, persona non gratis he'd be. Because in that moment when the game was still tied and all he was thinking about was himself. And for me... Well, that's hang a, on. Well, he was for, I think he was for a few seconds and he probably was throughout. But he rallied in that extra time. Exactly. He, was, he played brilliantly. At, but the point I'm time. making with Dietmar, which is a typical German reaction of pure coldness. It was the first yeah, time, I think, the first time, I think, on a football pitch that you saw pure, raw emotion from somebody mm. just pure in the moment that's happening mm. right now and it mm. kind of like was happening in households can you imagine the amount of people that was crying when he was crying it was mm. just like watching a child that you can't help it was horrible yeah, but that's that, that i think that's a great summary of uh, of gaza um 
he always was and always will be uh, a, a child at heart, really. Loved his yeah. football. Was a genius. I mean, the, yeah. Bobby Robson handled him perfectly, didn't he, Gary? Uh, w yeah. With oh, yeah. with what he let him get away with or how he got the best out of him. Uh, but I mean, with, with a football, there wasn't anyone better with, a, with the ball at their feet mm -hmm. than Gaza. No, that, no, as you say, Bobby, I mean... Some people thought it was a gamble when he took him and when he played him, but um, he, he was rewarded. And, and yeah. I mean, he, I think he exasperated Bobby at times. Some of the things he used to do. I, I remember we had a before the tournament, just before the tournament started, we had this um, let us play golf in um, Sardinia, where we were based before the games in Cagliari, and we had a little golf day, and um, we all had buggies because they didn't want to take. So it was a bit of fun, really, and uh, it's quite a posh little golf club there. And we were going round and um, and. Bobby had got wind that Gaza was playing without his shirt on, so he's <laughs> walking around. So I never forget it. There were Gaza in one buggy was being chased by Bobby Robson in another buggy around the golf course. I mean, <laughs> and trying to get him to put his shirt on and that sort of stuff. Before I think before we, was it the quarterfinal? No, I think it's actually before the semi-final. He was dragged off the tennis court, Gaza, in the afternoon. He was playing some tourist at tennis. <laughs> I mean, that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but despite all that stuff, he was, he, I mean, he was, he was fantastic company. I mean, yeah, and, and he's, he's practical jokes. So you'll, know, you'll know him so well. He was uh, just amazing. So we were all with him. We are all with him. Yes. But the weird thing is when you're in, I don't know whether you think the same. Um, when, you, when you're away in these major tournaments, you've got no idea of the madness that is, is going on at home because you're cocooned in this environment where you're sheltered from everything. And then... Like after 86, after 90, I'm sure you're the same, although obviously Euro 96 was in England, but take um, 98, for example. Yeah. When you come home, it's like, my God. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I had no idea Ness and Dorma was the BBC theme tune in, <laughs> in 1990. And, until you get home and start seeing a few um, documentaries, etc. But it is, it is, you know, you are sheltered from that, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah. It's funny you mentioned when we're talking about Gaza. He's, yeah, he's actually been watching these shows because he, he, he called oh, no. me last week and sent me... I said, what are you calling me he's for? He's been he calling said, me a lot as well. He sent me, a, he, sent me a picture, he sent me a picture through of him sat on a, on, on a, on a, a trout lake fishing in his slippers on his dressing gown. And then 10 minutes later, I got another one with him holding the trout there with a fish he'd, he, with a fish he'd caught. <laughs> <laughs> he loves his fishing. Oh, he loves He's it. probably catching them to put in Ali McCoy's car. <laughs> that's, what, that's what got him through uh, Euro 96. Yeah. It was him and David Seaman sitting, on the, uh, sitting fishing yeah. uh, all day, every day. Yeah. And if you don't know that Ali McCoy's story of um, um, fish in the car... Um, <laughs> I think something happened. I might as well tell you because yeah. something. I think something happened with um, McCoy and Gaza. So Gaza went fishing and thought I'll hide a fish in his car, but then had the ingenious idea of not hiding one but two. So one he <laughs> hid in a place that he knew he'd find it because he'd get in his car and go, "Well, oh, what's that smell?" But the genius is because obviously he found the fish and threw it away. He didn't realise there was another fish in there, so he could never get rid of the smell. I mean, that's I heard, that's yeah, clever, I, heard that they, I heard that they had to write. <laughs> they had to write the car off. The story, what I heard, is yeah. that they had to write the car off. <laughs> it smelled so bad, the car had to be written off. Yeah. That, that's a different scale entirely. You know the thing with, with Gaza as well? I remember there was a time where he was at Burnham Beaches, and it's one of those days, it's one of those in-between days. You get there maybe on a Sunday, and we ain't got to play until the next Saturday and that, so we're probably Monday afternoon, and we, I think it's me, Gaza, Les, um, Incy... I think Jamie, Jamie Rennett might have been there. Why is he? I'm not sure. But like, we end up all, we're going to sauna. And the thing with Gazza is, is that when he's being really sensible and talking stuff, you think to yourself, I like when Gazza's like this. And he's really being that really conscientious, really cool, <laughs> talking really cool stuff and everything to the point that then he said, um, anybody wants, anybody want water or anything? And then we went, yeah, I'll have a water and this and that. And then him and Les, Les Ferdinand, they left. And when he left, I remember us saying, I like when Gazza's not acting like a like when he's not being a you know what I mean? He's a speaks, he's, he's all right. <laughs> and so then what happens is, is that so we're sitting there and then all of a sudden we, we hear the door goes, wham, the door opens and then you hear whoosh, water, something flashes on the, on the coals and then we're like, then him and Les are holding the door and like you could see, you know how he does that laugh what he does like, e -e -e -e. he's doing that <laughs> out the door. He's doing that out the door and we're thinking, what's up with him? All of a sudden, him and Les have obviously gone in and he's peed in the water and thrown it on the hot coals. <laughs> and so he wouldn't open the door until we was like... <sighs> and you, if you've never... 
If you've never smelt hot pee, <laughs> never smell hot pee. It's <laughs> disgusting. Oh, th well, thanks for that. Thanks for no that. No problem. Uh, hilarious. <laughs> 1986, Diego Maradona. Um, obviously, we went into that game quarterfinal of a World Cup and it produced two of the moments that are most spoken about in the history of football. And it was both around one man. Um, <laughs> obviously, the hand of God and um, the goal of God, really, wasn't it? Have you seen that picture was doing, doing, the, doing the rounds with Peter Shilton and his unbelievable misses? Where somebody put underneath it, he's... he's I have seen have it. You, have you seen it out? Have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. You it's sent it to me the other day, yeah. I sent it to you. And it's just the best ever quote and just comeback I've ever seen. It's Peter Shilton with his wonderful wife. They look very happy, beautiful. And somebody just yeah. wrote under it, if you was punching this high when you were playing against Maradona, we probably could have won the World Cup. <laughs> Uh, it was brilliant. <laughs> Slightly cruel, but genius. Could you see on the pitch from where you, from where you were? Did you know straight away? No, I, I no, I didn't see it at all, Alan. To be perfectly honest, as you, as, as you can imagine, I was on the halfway line because they were attacking, mm. and um, I saw Hodgie punt the ball up in the air, and he, and it's funny enough, I we talked to him about twenty years later, um, Steve Hodge or Harry, as we used to call him, and um, he said it was it was a back pass. I said, you what? He said, no, I was actually trying to. Do a back pass, which you could yeah. in those days, so the keeper yeah. could use his hands. Yeah. I was going, what? That's even worse, mate, than a bad clearance <laughs> if you're actually trying to do it. Um, but obviously, I didn't know. I didn't see it. But I could tell straight away from the yeah. reaction um, of Schiltz and Terry Butcher and I think Terry Fennick. No. And they were all going like... To, so, for me, it was obvious. Mm. When was I at home? And I, instantly. At home, instantly. You, you, you could, you could Literally tell straight away because he, yeah, he did it cleverly, it didn't he? It was so like, clever. But his arm, it was yeah. just like, it, it took the BBC a little while to kind of get it going. But once they, he's handballed it. They're going to yeah. see it. Like, it I was, I felt so wrong. I felt so wrong. Yeah, why always us? Why always us? We had the Lampard thing, didn't we? <laughs> um, uh, victims, victim culture. But no, it was, yeah, so I didn't see it, but it was, and I think, well, I, I thought at the time, because the players all ran to the linesman because it was obviously the ref hadn't seen it. And I thought from his reaction, he's seen something, that linesman. And he admitted it about 15, 20 years later or something in a, in a book. What, that, that he, he saw it? Um, he, he that he thought he'd Did seen he? it, but he, oh. it wasn't 100... He, but he bo kind of bottled out, given the decision. Um, and it was... I, I mean, it's a tough one to take. I mean, it, you know, I've, I've spoken to Diego about it. I've done two documentaries with him and we've, we've discussed it. And he's quite cheeky about it. And he doesn't... You know, it's not seen as... It's, cheating over there. It's seen more as like a, a cleverness, you know, and they, they're different cultural backgrounds and stuff like that in terms of um, their football and stuff. So um, it doesn't kind of remove his, his heroic nature as he's seen in Argentina. They don't bother about it no, at all. It helped, as you said not. earlier, it helped them, helped them win a World Cup. Mm. What about the second goal, though? Was that that was it, what, 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 the second goal was, what, three or four minutes after he'd scored that one yeah, with his hand? Would he have scored it? the second one if he hadn't have scored in the first? If well, everything's different because, obviously, we don't kick off. He probably um, would have so scored the second who knows? one because no one could stop him. So if, 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 <laughs> no. the way he picked the ball up, it wouldn't make no difference if he'd done that the first time or not because no one, Peter yeah. Reid is still chasing him. No, what a, what a goal, what a finish. The balance, the technique, the, the pace... The ability to run with pace with the ball as he uh, as he so often did. Wow, what a goal. You know, yeah. if there were VAR, neither of those goals would have counted because just before Maradona gets the ball, if you look at the footage, We've got a foul. there's a shocking tackle, I think, on Glenn Hoddle. Yeah. And then the ref does, somehow doesn't give it. I didn't realise this until I saw it in, in the when I watched the game in its entirety for the first time a couple of years ago. Hoddle gets whacked. I mean, it's a yeah. blatant foul. It would never have been... So we actually won 1-0 and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> They'd have played Belgium in the semi-finals. Um, and, yeah, and I'd have scored the winning goal. I'd have scored the winning goal rather than the goal that absolutely no one remembers. <laughs> yeah, but Barnsley, Barnsley yeah, should have came so, on earlier. That was the big talk. Barnes, Barnsley yeah. put in two unbelievable... How did Enrique, that defender, get that off the line there, Lynx? You, you should have scored another one, yeah. Gary. It's your, it was your fault. You should have scored that other one. How did you not score that second one? It was actually a Lartica chair. I'd, I'd a didn't Lartica score the chair, one, so I yeah. I was there. Yeah, unbelievable. And I, the ball, Barnes beat him, and he came over. And I could see it all the way. It was coming right into my head, mm. and I thought, "I've scored. This is it." And as yeah. I headed it, and I did head it, he came from I don't How's know where, it, uh, like underneath, and it hits the back of his head. His I headed head, it, it comes out of the back of his head. 
Uh, it's just, and it went out. And, and I actually collided into the goalpost there and I, I did my medial ligaments. And I wouldn't have oh. played anymore in that World Cup. If, wow. Uh, um, and I wouldn't have, I'd have had to have gone off as well in that, in that game. But it was, I, you know, I, to this day, I'm still not sure where, where he came Johnny from. Johnny Barnes was brilliant um, when he came on. When he was oh, the last 15 on, or yeah. 20 minutes, he ran them ragged, yes, didn't he, crosses. down that left-hand side? Crosses. Yeah, he did. Shall I tell you what makes Maradona's second goal even more unbelievable? If you'd have been there, the pitch... Um, they'd had massive problems with it and it was relayed a couple of days before the game. And they, you know, like when you do your own garden, you get those small bits of turf. Yeah, yeah on the side. It sides. was like that. Yeah. Thousands of them everywhere. And every time you put your foot on one, it would move away it. from you. And it was hard to keep Easy. your balance. So how he did that first little intricate bit of skill on the first one, mm. <laughs> and let alone the rest of it, is, is beyond oh, belief. Fantastic. But yeah. Yeah. But like, um, I, 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 I think the referee, I think the referee mentioned that he was under orders that you have to get your direction from the linesman. If the linesman, you, you, he's mm. just going to have faith in the linesman. The linesman didn't put his flag up, and like no, you mentioned, that he said afterwards that um, that you know, what I mean, mm. yeah, okay, I did see something, but I wasn't. And the fact is, that's why the referee gave it. But it was, yeah. I, I just remember being at home, just feeling so wronged. And is that then, where you watched it from? Did you both watch yeah. it from home? Or? Yeah, mm. I was watching it at home. Yeah. I was watching yeah. it. With, it was about it was about six or seven of us. I remember. When the second goal happened, it's almost like we totally forgot the first goal because of how magnificent it was. And yeah. how, you know what I mean? Because yeah. we went into that 86 World Cup and he was the, the big news. Oh, because when you look at players that come into a World Cup that you're expecting to come up with the goods, he did it. It was like when you go back to mm. Paolo Rossi, mm. he was suspended before the 82 and he's saying, oh, he's a great goal scorer. He's, he didn't score first, but then he ended up winning the World Cup from yeah. scoring all the goals. Ian, Yo. is that is that a Diego Maradona I can see on your shirt? To be honest, it is. Have, you done, have you done that it to an, have you done that to try and irritate me? You know what? <laughs> to, to be honest, I didn't realise. No, it's only once I went through my my list, then obviously yeah. the hand of Diego was number one. But at the end of the day, he is still my favourite player in, in the whole world um, yeah. with all of his oh, But the fact player. is, is that yeah, Don Diego. It is Don Diego. Don Diego, Don Diego. certainly. It certainly was. Um, what better place to, to, to finish this week, really? Um, I think, um, firstly, though, we need your um, list, as we always do. Let's not um, yeah. break the rules of a lifetime. Um, Ian, mm. as you, as in your Diego Maradona shirt, and <laughs> Hand of God is obviously your top spot, but give us your 10 to 1. OK, number 10 was Archie Gemmold, um, Ali's Army, Holland 1978. Um, Robson Carnu, number 9. Um, David Beckham sending off number eight. Ronaldo's wink number seven. Winning the penalty shootout 2018 number six. Uh, Ireland beating Spain number five. Number four was the dentist chair. Number three was England losing to Iceland. Uh, number two was Gaza's crying. And number one was Don Diego. Hand of God. Thank you, um, Alan. Uh, in ten uh, it was uh, Gaza in 1990. In nine uh, the Ronaldo wink. In eight, it was England win a penalty shootout in the World Cup. Seven, the dentist chair. Uh, six was Scotland beating Holland. Uh, five, Northern Ireland beating Spain. Uh, and four, Robson Carnu goal. In three, England losing to Iceland. In two, the David Beckham red card. And in one, hand of God. Uh, fantastic stuff. That kind of... Um... Uh, wraps things up because the season's obviously at an end. What we should be doing now, of course, is looking forward to the Euros. <laughs> um, massive miss this summer, isn't it? Yes, I'd say. Um, I do love a, yeah. I do love a tournament at the end of a season. Um, mm -hmm. Very excited about the England team. Um, but, you know, when, when the time's right... Do you think, right, perhaps, though, Ian, yeah, do you on. think a year on, it might suit this England team because it's so young? Might be better. We might be in a stronger position a year's time. Hopefully, and we was going into it again with our top man injured. So, um, yeah, you know true. what I mean? Uh, you know, so hopefully it will. But like I say, you know, it all comes down to when it's right to do so and we can get back, get football back when it's right for everybody. Absolutely. Um, Alan, you're looking forward to the Euros. Did you, what were your expectancies? Yeah, I was, uh, I was looking forward to it. There was, uh, there was an expectancy that, uh, that England would do uh, well Again, right, he's correct in saying uh, there were concerns with Lee, uh, with Harry Kane and his, uh, and his injury. Um, but it's not to be, unfortunately. We'll have to go on and win it next year instead. OK, um, Ian and Alan, uh, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's been a lot of fun over the last uh, few weeks and I'm glad you've uh, seemed to be enjoying it, whether you're listening on 
um, the podcast or watching it on the TV. Uh, either way, thank you. News. The British government has announced a pandemic. For what? Chief Isolati Sideman. Hello. Says he will be making regular statements via his podcast. What? We are all dealing with the effects of the coronavirus, aka the only CV to make you lose your job. So join me for my new podcast called Mandemic. I have thoughts I am tired of sharing with my mirror. Everything from the news reports to the memes to the conspiracy theories. I hope you're ready. Mandemic. Download and subscribe now at BBC Sounds. <laughs>